We've had a ton of rain here in southern Appalachia and western North Carolina. If I'm really quiet and you listen, I'm sure you can hear the creek. It's just rolling. Stamy Creek is full and it's running its way on down to Brasstown and beyond from all the rain. Our yard is a mess. There's pretty much a lake in the backyard. Uh, and this time of the year with the freezing and the thawing and the freezing and the thawing, things get so muddy and so soupy and soggy anyway. From your driveway to your chicken lot, things just get to be a mess this time of the year. And then with all this additional rain that we've had, it just seems like it's made things worse. But while I was bemoaning the fact that I have to walk through a lake to reach the chickens, I decided that I would talk to you today about, um, there's so many colorful sayings about weather, but specifically today talk about rain in Appalachia. So I thought we could go over a few of them. A few years ago when I was going to write about rain during a rainy spell that we were having on the Blind Pig and the Acorn, I looked in the one of my favorite books that I like to look at, and I actually don't own the book, but you can access it online, but it's Frank C. Brown's collection of folklore uh, from North Carolina is where the folklore is from, but I copied down a few of his things, so I thought I'd share them with you today. Some of them I've heard and some of them I've never heard, but maybe you have. So, uh, like a picked chicken in a rainstorm, that one sounds very uncomfortable. Wouldn't want to be a picked chicken in the rainstorm. Uh, rain, I've heard this one, raining like cattle with their horns down. So you think about that, raining like cattle with their horns down. I don't know if their horns were supposed to pour out the rain or what. A bullfrog knows more about the rain than the almanac. I guess a bullfrog would since they're close to the land, close to the earth. Uh, this one is really a deep saying if you think about it, but it could be, it, it applies to rain, I guess it could be took um, literally too. A small rain will lay a great dust, well a small rain will. If you've ever had been in like a drought area or on a hot summer day, and you when the, if you can catch the rain when it first starts to really come down, those big fat drops, you can see how it, the little poofs, poofs of dust come up off the ground, but before you know it, just a small amount of rain has laid that dust down. Uh, more rain, more rest. I'm sure that one was, uh, well, it could be today too. A lot of people still farm or homestead or whatever, but if it's raining, a lot of times that keeps you close to home and you're not out and about working. You're, you're in the house uh, or in the, inside the barn or something like that doing something easier than if it wasn't raining, you'd be out in the field. Sense enough to come out of the rain. I know you've heard that one. That was really common. Somebody might say, he don't have sense enough to come out of the rain. I don't know what's wrong with him. Just meaning that he's not real bright or he's not acting in a, um, an intelligent manner. This is a, a really old one because we don't talk about broadcloth anymore, but the rain doesn't know broadcloth from jeans. Voice like a uh, rain on a tin roof. That one, uh, we have a tin roof, so that one to me is a very beautiful voice, rain on a tin roof. It never rains, but it pours. That's a real common one. I bet you've heard I have my whole life. One raindrop can't make a crop. That's an interesting one. Yeah, it takes more than one drop of rain to make a crop. As welcome as the sun after a rain. That's a good one. After all this wet, dreary weather we've had here, I'll be glad for some sunshine. The morning rain is like an old woman's dance soon over. I don't, that one's a funny one. The morning rain is like an old woman's dance soon over. This rain has not been like that because it's been raining for about 48 hours. A gully washer is a heavy rain. Rain seed, mottled clouds that mean rain is coming. So if you see cl mottled clouds, they're saying that's called rain seed. You know that rain is soon coming. A trash breaker or a trash washer, that's a big and a sudden downpour of rain that would be like to wash the trash out of the ditch. It could be real trash. Unfortunately, people litter. I, um, I wish people wouldn't litter, but so it could be that, but it could also just be, if you think of a ditch that gets trashed in the form of branches and leaves uh, and just debris from the actual, from nature, from woods in it, and then it clean, a big rain will clean all that out. Clear sunset on a Friday, rain by Monday. So if you've got a clear sunset on Friday, you'll have rain by Monday. I don't know about that one. Rain before 7 stops by 11. I've heard that one, but again, that's not happened in the last two days here. Leaves turn inside out before means a storm and a rain are coming. If you see the leaves on a tree turn inside out. If you see enough blue sky to patch a jacket, the rain is passing. Well, look, I see no blue sky today, so I don't think my rain's passing away yet. 
Back in the day when the deer hunter and I first were married, or when we were dating, we weren't married, I worked at Lake Logan, that's in Haywood County, and at that time, Champion International owned it, and it was a meeting facility. They used it. There was a lake there, people could fish, they could go golfing, they could do those kind of entertainment things, but then they also had meetings about whatever, you know, uh, it was affiliates and people that worked for Champion, so they would come there to have meetings and trainings and that kind of thing. But there was a, a gentleman that worked there in the maintenance department and he lived above the lake and he lived there pretty much his whole life i think but he told me one time a story we'd had a big rain there and then he told me a story of when he was a boy he could remember there was a cloud burst so that's another thing you'll hear rain called in appalachia is a cloud burst so a cloud burst is where it comes a really big heavy rain up the mountain or up in an area that's not like maybe it, it just rained in one certain area it wasn't where you were at and then all that water has to go somewhere so he told me that when he was a child, he could remember that happened at the headwaters kind of at the Pigeon uh, River there. And that it, it was, people had no warning in those days. I'm not sure they would today either. Maybe the weather could tell you there might be, you know, torrential rain, rain coming. But in those days, they had no warning. So that big body of water come down the river and it washed a lot of people's homes away. And he could remember how sad it was, you know, it was just a terrible time. But so a cloud burst is another one that you'll hear. Uh, one I seen in the, Dictionary Smoky Mountain English a long time ago that I'd never heard of was a little Noah So if it comes a little Noah, that's a heavy rainstorm a little Noah and back when I wrote about that uh, Rain on the blind pig and the acorn a lot of my readers had interesting things to say about it So I'm gonna read you some of those now so um, Mama bug she lives further up north than me But she said she'd never heard of a little Noah like me, but folks around where she lives They call them gully washers or frog stranglers. That's another common one. You'll hear here is uh, frog stranglers uh, Steve he also said gully washers that was common where he was at uh, Bradley he said he lived down in uh, not too far from me over in Georgia he said I've heard most of the sayings about rain there was one I used to hear concerning an impending hard rain like if it was going to come a hard rain granny used to say and I was never really sure why what it meant or the mechanics of her saying but she'd say boys now you need to get inside because it's fixing to rain like two cats a fighting so that was one Bradley shared Ethelene Dyer Jones also lived over near where um, Bradley did. She doesn't now. She lives further south in Georgia, but she said much rain in October, much wind in December. That was one that she shared. Wanda said that she had never heard of the little Noah either, but the rest were commonly used where she lived, and that uh, and this was in Alabama. And her daddy used to say the bottom fell out. I've heard of that one. You might be saying I was uh, just got my groceries and I was going to the car and the bottom fell out and I got soaking wet. So that's a common one. Uh, Don Cassida told this story about the fell a flood. That's common here. You say it fell a flood yesterday and I got wet or, you know, I didn't get the hay up or whatever. But so Don Cassida said, uh, fell a flood was mentioned at our family reunion last Sunday. Of course, this comments from uh, a good long time ago. But around 1940, there was what Pearl Cable called a water spout in Coots Cove on the east side of Pilkey Creek Basin. So this is over in Swain County, North Carolina. It was a very localized pouring. Pearl didn't recall it even raining at their house less than a mile away, which completely decimated, the water spout completely decimated the area where it did fall, washing away homes, May Posey's mill, and the bridge below the mill. A dead cow was left hanging up in a tree more than 10 feet off the ground. The swath it cut appears to have been close to 100 foot wide in places, leaving nothing other than rocks in its wake. This is on a feeder stream, which a 60-year-old feller wearing a backpack can normally jump across. In early September of 1951, there was a washout event over on the Tennessee side where a wall of water came down the west prong of the Little Pigeon River in Gatlinburg and carried cars downstream. So those, you can see the power of rain and water, the water it leaves behind there. So that's water spout and cloud burst, those two. And I guess the little Noah are, are really heavy rains that really cause damage, not like the one I've had, which has just made everything soupy and wet. So Ken Roper, he lives up in the Topton area of my county. He said he was familiar uh, with the saying, he called it a young Noah though, instead of a little Noah. It was a young Noah when it come a downburst and started flooding. And way back in the 30s, he said before he was even thought about, his parents had a cloudburst and they escaped in the middle of the night with their three children. That would have been terrifying. 
uh, Ed Ammons, he had an interesting one. He said, the first TV we ever had had come from a TV shop in Franklin that had been flooded. The set worked just fine when we could get it to get a picture. When it finally gave up, me and Harold, that was his brother, opened it up to try to fix it, and it still had mud on the inside. So that's interesting. They, they got that TV, and then it actually worked for a long time, even though they didn't know it had mud on the inside where it had been damaged in a flood. Let's see, here's one from Ray. Uh, there'll be some good rock hunting after these. He called them Mississippi log rollers. So he was from, um, I guess he was from Mississippi. So uh, that is good, thinking about the rock. Good time to hunt rocks. Also good time to hunt arrowheads if you're somebody that likes to go out and do that after a heavy rain. But for us, the Stamy Creek, my daughter Katie, she's obsessed with rocks. And I hope to do a video and tell you more about that, what she does with rocks now. But after a good heavy rain, she always wants to go to the creek and see what kind of rocks have washed down when it's, when it's rolling like it is right now. So Bill Burnett, he was a deer reader of the Blind Pig and the Acorn. He was from Swain County. He passed away, though. But um, we miss him. I miss his comments. He always had insightful things to say. But he says, I've heard most of these, but a couple more are a stump floater and a frog drowner come to mind. And then he says, a few days ago, we had a downpour. A neighbor's garden ended up in downtown Bryson City, which is a mile away. The branch which drains our neighborhood enters the Tuckasegee right behind the pavilion where the Presley girls were scheduled to perform. So they may have seen a little of this downfall or the results. That He must have left that at a time when um, we were playing there in Bryson City at the little pavilion there. We play there usually every summer. Um, Jim Cassida, he shared this one. When clouds hang heavy on the hills, expect coming rain and chills. So that's an old one you can tell. When clouds hang heavy on the hills, expect coming rain and chills. Uh, I remember one time when I was still working for the college and it fell a flood right about the time I was supposed to go home. And not only that, we were scheduled to play a performance. We were going to play and it was outside. It was in the summertime. So I thought, well, this is just great. That's, that's how it goes. You know, we're going to get soaking wet or maybe they'll cancel the event or our instruments will get wet or whatever. But kind of like what Don was talking about in Pearl Cable's story, when, um, when I left to go to the gig, when I got home, not a drop had fell in Brasstown. I mean, when I left work and come home, and then when we left to go to play the music in Andrews, not a drop had fell there either. So I think it, that day, all the rain decided to fall in Peachtree, which is kind of between the two. And during that time, I remember my brother Steve told me the same kind of story. Rain is so funny. So he was working over in Bellevue. That's a community that's, uh, there's maybe, there's Brasstown, Martins Creek, and then Bellevue. So about two communities away. And he was working over there and he said it rained so hard that just I mean in no time the ditches had just filled with water they were just level with water and the water was running across the road you know it was just unbelievable how much rain had fell just in a really quick short time and, and filled the ditches to the point they were running over the roads but so he said he finished up his job and headed for home and he just just before you know it he quickly just drove into dry dry area where not a bit of rain had fell where all that other rain had fell you know in Bellevue but by the time he got just right down the road, it was dry as a bone, nothing had fell. So that's just interesting um, to think about rain and its power. And then of course, there's the times when we wish we had rain, especially as gardeners or farmers or homesteaders when you really need rain for your crops and then it seems like you can't get none for nothing, you know. There's a couple of old ones uh, that tell you how you're supposed to bring on rains kind of things. One, the only one I can think of right now is to lay a black snake across a fence but maybe you'll think if you know any of those you can share them or any other rain sayings that'd be great if you could share those when Corey and Katie was little I used to sing I'm sure you've heard it the little uh, song rain rain go away so I would say rain rain go away Corey and Katie want to play you know I, I maybe I should try singing that now because I'd love to be out in the yard doing stuff getting ready for the spring I hope that you enjoyed this little talk about rain, and please, if you've got any other things to add to it, I hope you will, but mostly I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.